Hello everyone, here is Dr. Benaduce. In this video, we are going over different structures that we find in this model. This is a vertebra, right? Now, would you be able to tell me which type of vertebra this is? This is the cervical vertebra. Why? I know it's a cervical vertebra because I see here the spinous process cut into two. And bifid spinous processes are only found in the cervical vertebra. I also see that I have a hole in the transverse process. Consequently, these are transverse foramen. And those are also only found in cervical vertebra. Now, if this is the spinous process, this has to be the body which is closer to the center of our body, and that's why the other name for body is centrum. If we look right here in the middle, we have a big hole, and this big hole is named vertebral foramen, and passing through the vertebral foramen, we have the spinal cord, and here you have it. So, here is the spinal cord, and the spinal cord, we identify the white matter and the gray matter. And exactly in the center, we have the central canal, right here. Now, this is a fat fissure, and this is a skinny sulcus. And that's how you do to remember that the fat fissure is the anterior median fissure, because this is anterior, right? It's closer to the center of the body. And the skinny sulcus is the posterior median sulcus. So the sulcus is always on the same side as the spinous process and the fissure is always on the same side as the body because the body is always anterior. So again, you have the anterior median fissure and the posterior median sulcus. If we look closely to the gray matter, what we see is that we have these horns this one is the most posterior one, so this is the posterior gray horn. This is the most lateral one, you have the lateral gray horn. And this is the most anterior one, this is the anterior gray horn. And in this side, the same thing, you have the posterior gray horn, lateral gray horn, and the anterior gray horn. What we see as well are the meninges. We see here the one that really hugs the spinal cord per se. This is the pia mother. And then the one that's a little further away from the spinal cord is this one. This one, this is the arachnoid matter and the most outside one, the most durable one, this one is the dura matter. Between the dura matter and the arachnoid matter, we have a space. This space is underneath, is below the dura matter, so this is the subdural space. And between the arachnoid matter and the pia matter, we have another space. Since this space is between the arachnoid and the pia mother, it is below the arachnoid mother. This space is named subdural space. We also see here the roots. We have this one that's closer to the anterior aspect of the vertebra. So this is the anterior root. This one is closer to the posterior aspect of the vertebra. So this is the posterior root and you can see on this side as well the anterior root the posterior or dorsal root because we remember that the dorsal and posterior is the same thing and anterior and ventral is the same thing right and when we see here you have the dorsal root and then you see a little ball guys this ball is where we find the group of neuronal cell bodies and a group of neuronal cell bodies outside of the central nervous system is named ganglion. This ganglion is named dorsal root ganglion. Obviously, it is connected to the dorsal root. So this is the dorsal root ganglion. This has to be the dorsal root, which means that we have left for this one to be the ventral or anterior root. Good job. Now, pay attention right here. This area right here is where we have the dorsal root and the ventral root merging. And when we have them merging, we have a spinal nerve. 
So here is where we have the spinal nerve. And after they all get together here, the dorsal root and ventral root nerve fibers get together, they split and they go into different directions. And then after this point is what we have, ramus. So this is a ramus and here you have another ramus because these were roots after they get together, when they split again, then we have ramus. And this ramus right here is closer to the posterior aspect of this vertebra. Consequently, this is the dorsal ramus. And this one that's closer to the anterior ventral part, this is the ventral ramus or anterior ramus. So this is the anterior or ventral ramus and this is the dorsal or posterior ramus. This was a group of neuronal cell bodies outside of the central nervous system. That's why we call this ganglion, dorsal root ganglion specifically. But now we look here, we have this other group of neuronal cell bodies outside of the central nervous system. And this one is involved with the sympathetic autonomic nervous system. And that's why we call this one sympathetic ganglion. And when we have this communication between the sympathetic ganglion and the anterior ramus, remember, this is the body of this vertebra, we have this communication right here. This is the rami communicantes, like Italian, yes, communicantes, because it's communicating. This, the anterior ramus and the sympathetic ganglion right here. When we look on this side, we have it all covered, right, by this dura mater. You see, this is the dura mater. This is the dura mater, right? We talked that this was the dura mater. And then basically the dura mater extends to the side and covers this all and covers here the spinal nerve, right? How do we call this dura mater that extends to the sides and now becomes what covers the most outside part of a spinal nerve. I need you to go and check that because we do talk about that in lecture. So I want to show you that on this side, we show it uncovered, but here we have the same structures covered. Here is the spinal nerve and this has to be the anterior or ventral ramus communicating rami communicantes with the sympathetic ganglion. And if this is the anterior or ventral ramus, this has to be the posterior or dorsal ramus. Another thing we see here is that, look at this. So we just talked about the dura mater that extends to the sides and covers the spinal nerve and you're figuring out the name. Now look here at the pia mater. If you pay attention, look at there, you see that? Those are extensions of pia mater, here, here, that they are extending laterally and they're fusing with the arachnoid and dura mater. And these extensions, they anchor our spinal cord from moving side to side. How are those extensions of the pia mater that anchor our spinal cord laterally called? They are called denticulate ligaments. That's all for this model. Let me know if this was helpful. Bye.